the next set of inputs that we want to cover is what we call the Earth Builder. And the Earth Builder is the second tab down from the left. And if we click on that, it will pull up two different grids where we can input key information. First is the geology grid. And this is where we would enter in the true vertical depth and the description of any particular formation tops that we want to show on our plots or on our sketches. And I just so happen to have some information about rock properties in a spreadsheet here. And fortunately, ERA can take data from an Excel file. And if I just highlight the TBD and the formation names, click Copy, minimize the spreadsheet, and then click on the first cell in this grid and paste with a right click, my formation tops are now entered. And later on I'll show you where we can select whether or not we want to display those formation tops on any given plot. The other section of rock property of the Earth Builder is the rock properties. And this is where we can define key geomechanical constraints. By default, ERA gives you the options to display two different fracture gradients, a minimum and a maximum in case there is there is some uncertainty in the fracture gradient. Two different pore pressures, a minimum and maximum to allow for a depletion case or a high side case. And then three different collapse gradients. Collapse gradient low, medium, and high. And what those are really intended to display is low risk, medium risk, and high risk of collapse. Not necessarily high values of equivalent mud weight, but rather low values of, equ of equivalent mud weight indicating that there is more risk of the hole catastrophically failing. Many geomechanical vendors can provide collapse in different categories of risk or magnitude of failure. Uh, breakout width or depth of damage would be common ways of displaying this risk concept. And we also have a column for the confined compressive strength, which is used in the predictive ROP algorithm. Nowhere else is the CCS really required. Uh, once again, I have a spreadsheet that has all of this information already predefined, and this might come from a geomechanics study or information that you may have collected uh, in your field. So as you can see, uh, all this data is organized in the same order as what I have in my, my grid in ERA. TVD, two different fracture gradients, two different pore pressures, and three different ca uh, categories of collapse gradient. Again, I can just do a uh, drag highlight, uh, copy, go back to ERA, scroll on over to my very first row and column, and I can control V, or I could do right click paste. Here I've chose to do control V. You notice the graph on the left is now populated with markers for my formation tops as well as uh, the pore pressure, fracture gradient, and collapse gradient curves. Right now, this plot is displayed in true vertical depth. If I happen to have a directional survey displayed, then when I switch to the MD view, the plot would change accordingly. Another interesting feature that can be used in the rock properties grid is a change of the column names. And you'll notice uh, it's the fourth button down from the top. Column names allows me to alter the naming of each one of these columns. If for some reason frac min doesn't really describe what um, this data is really meant to display, perhaps this is a minimum horizontal stress. And so I want to change the header to sh min and perhaps the max frac gradient is really the breakdown gradient. If I'm using depth of damage, for example, uh, I might choose to call this DOD 0% or DOD 5% and DOD 10%. Looks like I have a bit of an error here. Now, all of these headers have just changed using those new names, as will the curves in the legend, the legend in the curves on the plots, on any graph that uses these limitations, your ECD plots, your surgeon swab plots. So that's a very handy and useful way to update uh, the nomenclature and naming of your rock mechanics curves. If for some reason uh, I made a mistake with this data, I could clear all the, uh, all the data by hitting this clear rock button. That will prompt you and ask you if you really want to do that, because this will delete everything. Um, 
I click yes, then obviously all the data goes away. Uh, and I do have an undo button that will restore all the data if uh, that's what I need to do. Um, the undo button only goes back one step. Unlike Excel or Word, uh, it doesn't have a, a chain of undo features. It's just a, a one-step undo. Sort rocks, what that will do is if I've entered in data that's out of sequence in terms of TVD, it will reshuffle all the entries so that they're in chronological order from a TVD perspective. Import helper, if I was trying to import data from a format other than Excel, um, this is a handy utility. For me, uh, opening up a file in Excel or text is really the most convenient way for inputting this sort of data. Go ahead and close that out. This concludes the Earth Builder input.